welcome to the Amateur Hour. My name is Justin. And my name's Tyler. And I'm the one called Junior. Ooh. And today we're sponsored by Oxford Gamers Den. Join the den. Join the den. As well as Lofty Cat Studios. We'll get into more of that later. We would like to... Update. Yeah. We want to update you guys. So we got new recording equipment. So if you guys like how we sound, don't like how we sound, well then screw you. Of course, let (laughs) us know if we do sound like crap because I kind of want to know. But it was definitely a project getting this audio equipment working. First attempt was a complete fail. Yeah, we we had a planned recording for Sunday, but unfortunately that didn't work out. That didn't work out at all. We we ended up failing. We had to get whole new equipment, but now we're all set. So because of that, we are bringing to you guys two episodes this week and this week only. So we are hopefully scheduled to release either next Wednesday and next Friday. So let's hope for the best, guys. We will for sure be on next Friday, but let's hope this one shoots out on Wednesday. With that said, I want to introduce our new co 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 host junior yeah yeah yeah. i missed the last one you know guys brought up some pretty good stuff and um guys i had to pull the trigger i'm back on xbox live i bought i bought gears of war 5 i was so excited that is going to to be a co-op yep and i was i was super excited to play that i got the game code on like thursday night at nine I was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to play this before I go to bed. You know, really? got to get up at, like, 5 in the morning to work. But I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, maybe I have time. It's about Download nine. was, like, three hours. How so, much was it? Like, the regular 59 bucks? Um, th- Actually, this is a really good, interesting thing I observed, I should say. Uh, So I went on Amazon to pre-order it, mm-hmm. and the disc was $10 cheaper than the digital download. Really? Yeah. That's kind of backward. That is. It's very backward. It's like you're getting a physical copy, like a good, versus like a digital copy that's nothing. It's just, you know, the product right. minus you think you, the you physical have to, copy. You would think you'd have to pay more because you have to manufacture that copy rather than just copy it off a server and download it. Yeah. But well, I did go with the Ultimate Edition. Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh you know gosh. what that means, Justin? We're going to have to uh, split that purchase on Xbox so we it can now. share it. I got to buy it. Here's the thing, though. I like digital the digital downloads. What do you guys think is going to happen to discs? They're going to die. They're going to die just like everything dies. You had vinyl, then cassettes came out, and then CDs. Everyone's already and moving just... away from CDs. But is it going to come back? No, no, it's not going to no? come back. No, with the God. way games move, no way. The, the only way vinyl? it's going to come back is if you guys buy your special edition package that comes with the aluminum case, some kind of game accessories, yeah. little props, then you're going to get a hard disc with that. But you're also going to pay like $200 for the kit. But I love but, the discs. I, I, Well, I do and I don't. I like that I can share now with digital, and at least for Xbox, but I don't like the fact that we're, I love. I like the feeling of a disc. I like the smell of a disc. Okay, <laughs> when you open it up, it's like, ah, and the, it, yeah, <laughs> freshly plastic. And then in the back of it says "Made in Mexico," and you're like, <laughs> "That's my people, right?" <laughs> For a long time, I liked to fill a shelf with all my games because it just looked cool. You have all your games for show on the shelf, and when your buddy comes over, you're like, "Dude, look at this new game!" You grab the case, you pop it in the thing. But now, I mean, you just Turn on the Xbox, you hit download, or if you already downloaded it, you just pick the game, it starts playing. It's You don't have to store all that. You have more space. You don't have to have all the CDs sitting around. And you can't scratch it. Yeah, let me ask you this. Are you still saving things on USBs, or are you moving more towards the cloud? I'm all cloud. Exactly. It's easier. Ex- I mean, I forget USB. But here's the thing, though. You still can't get... The, like, if I wanted to carry a hefty file, I really can't do that through, let's say, the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Which sucks. Or you get, what's that, like, a a, a lack of quality. Like, let's say I uploaded a video. Now it's not at 4K anymore because I uploaded it to the cloud, and now that kind of sucks. Well, all that kind of stuff depends on the cloud. Right. Well, I didn't even know there's differences (laughs) in clouds. (laughs) You you are going to pay more. Because 
the way the cloud works is you pay for your space. So, do you, yeah, you pay for clouds? I don't pay for a cloud though. Well, that's because well, you okay. haven't hit your limit. Oh. Yeah, right. So let's say you're using your Google Cloud or something. They yeah. give you so many Always. gigs for free. If you go over that, they either start deleting your stuff and they replace it with the new stuff, or you can pay monthly to have more on it. Or if you have an iPhone, you get the annoying iCloud storage almost empty. I get that all the time. My iPhone 8 Plus is a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what? I get it on my Mac, too, so I should, I should just say Apple products in general. You get well, that's, that's the uh, the Apple cloud, the iCloud it is. I, yeah, I just I don't use the clouds. I, 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 well, I do. Okay, only Google, though. Like, I tried Microsoft's cloud, and it's kind of bad, to be honest. My school runs that, but I, I'm not a big oh, fan. Oh, man. You know what? Don't even get me started on, like, the whole Microsoft 360. Is that what it's called? The online version of, like, Word and... Oh, Excel. it is I, such I, shit. I, I didn't it, hear about this. Explain. It's so bad. <laughs> what, what is it? Microsoft uh, Office 360? Yes. Yeah, you, like you go on um, Internet Explorer. Oh, no, it's Edge now. You go on Edge and you can, well, you can use any browser, but they want you to use Edge. Um, but you can just go to Word, Excel, but it's so dumbed down. All the features that you guys want, they, all of them are, they either don't work well or they're not there at all. Yeah. I had no clue. I it, use, because I use Google Docs. Yeah, Google Docs is far superior. It's, yeah, because you save it as a other Word document. Just, Google poor. Docs is so simple, Yeah. but also at the same time, you don't have to search for tools. Yeah. Their layout is so well thought out. I mean, my little cousin, she's uh, fourth, fifth grade. They just started using laptops at school. She didn't have to figure it out. Like, it was just easy, and they used the Chromebooks, so they used all the Google software. Why? That's another thing. Like, why is technology being so integrated into our schools nowadays? I don't know if I like that because doesn't technology like the blue rays from computers and stuff hurt your eyes? So why necessarily would we kind of engage our society into that, you know, and like ruin our kids' eyes for life? I've never seen so many four eyes till like now. Like I have glasses, Junior has glasses, Tyler has glasses. We all have glasses yeah. here. I might as well have like eight eyes. <laughs> my eyes are terrible i got the thickest lenses in the group yeah you definitely do yeah. <laughs> you've got some hefty lenses bro no one no one's gonna crack an eye joke about me no no, no i not. was waiting for it well no we're on we're on the same boat i mean besides your wandering eye that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes i feel violated i'm not gonna lie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks a All little right. bit too far left what well, <laughs> Let's not throw out any uh, left ballpark ideas there, Justin. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> just to go back to that real quick, man, beside, outside of school, they're still going to be exposed to so much technology just because oh, TVs. Sure. TVs are like 100 inches now? Tablets. What? You can buy your kid a tablet yeah. so cheap now. And oh, what are yeah. they going to do? They're going to hold it right here in their face, Definitely. and they are going to glue their eyes to it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have learning games on there that like actually teach them useful yeah. skills. They are glued to that yeah. tablet no matter what. And, you know, a lot of studies have shown that, um, you know, looking at screens and different colors constantly, it's firing like a ton of neurons in your brain, and that actually kind of factors in for hyperactive disorder. So, to be honest, I see a lot of kids that are suffering from ADHD nowadays. Me, personally. That's like, you know. And that's something I used to not see when I was a kid. That was like a rarity. That kid was hyper probably because of a lot of stuff that he would go through at home. But, like, not because of screens. But now I'm seeing this kid has a tablet. That kid has a tablet. And then, and then here's another thing, actually, I want to uh, touch on. is like, are we giving these kids too much freedom with this technology like meaning there's so much bad stuff you can see on you know computers oh yeah you're stuff. one click away man you're one click away and now we're well, opening I'm, our children i'm gonna say yes and no because there's parental smart, guides right are, there's sorry, there's parental settings and everything that you can set up to have your child not able to do that and as far as everything's on a computer now so this day, I mean, the sooner your kid knows how to use a computer, he might actually be a little bit more successful later in life because 
it don't matter if you're going to go be a car mechanic. You're spending more and more time on a computer. Even though a lot of your job's using tools, wrenches, and all that in the car, you're going to have a USB port plugged into this car, and you're going to do half your job on a computer. I mean, like, I don't know how I feel about all that. Honestly, like, and then, too, like, where does the penmanship go for students? You know, that's... This was something that I thought was pretty interesting because, like, I can't type at all, but I can write cursive. Like, I we're in too. like a weird. I can too. <laughs> we're in like a weird between generation kind of thing. Yeah, where like, it's like right after us, they got rid of cursive and like everything was right? learned how to type and all that. I was mad because when I had to learn how to use cursive and everything, and then we had to like read the differences. Cursive. If you've ever tried to read someone's handwriting with bad cursive. Ooh, Especially when your dog. teacher had yeah. bad cursive. It's literally chicken It's scratch. terrible. And now that they don't even do it at all, I'm just like, what the, did I go through that for? You know? Why did I have to do all that? And then yep. they're just going to drop it. I was mad. I, I agree. I was upset. Like, honestly, though, my regular manuscript handwriting looks like garbage. Oh, it looks like garbage. But my cursive, beautiful. It's a beautiful... <laughs> well, here's here's why. Because you're probably writing, and at the same time, you're like, oh, this looks good, so you're going slow, and you're paying attention to it. Yeah, that's true. I never thought about it like that. Well, it's a little more flowy, I if guess. I, if I'm writing in cursive, I'm not picking up my pencil. I'm going through it, and I'm writing through it, and it's... When I'm writing in manuscript, I'm picking up my pencil, I'm slashing it back and forth, I'm, you know... Oh, I'm not um, even picking up my pencil. Every, I'm doing manuscript, but like everything's just kind of flowing in together. Oh, yeah. that, that's how I do it. I got crooked. like a mixture of both when I write. So, really? Well, like, it's not a mixture of both for me. It's just that I'm so lazy that I don't even pick up the pen between the letters. Mm-hmm. And well, it's not cursive letters, so it just looks like oh, shit. Oh, that's awkward. I, yeah, <laughs> I ended up having to like switch my handwriting at least like five times, and I'm pretty set now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't change my handwriting. I'm stuck. I oh, yeah. either... You could change it. You just have to like really. You have to try. Oh. I and... guess. I guess for me too. Like I'm. I like graffiti and whatnot. So like the different ways letters look kind of intrigued me. So I was like, oh, this handwriting looks pretty cool. And that's what kind of what made me stick like calligraphy. To it. Yeah, yeah. Almost. So that's for more of like an artsy kind of thing. Yeah, so... I'm not artsy. I'm just like I got. I, I'm, I'm writing because I have to on a piece of paper. But if I have a choice. You best believe I'm going to my computer and typing that out. My notes for this podcast are typed out. I'm not going to write that. Yeah, unless the teacher's like, oh, you just got to turn in one page. You're like, written or typed? Like, oh, not okay. anymore. Oh, yeah. you just go, you just write that out because that's a lot <laughs> shorter. Than... <laughs> but well, I don't know. It depends because I write really small. Oh, yeah, so, so do eh, I. No, either I way, might want to type that because on my handwriting on paper, I could probably fit twice as much as my computer fits when they're doing you like your twelve font, your regular, you know, all the standards that you do your school paper in. Well, that's kind of, that was kind of a bad example on my part, just because like they started catching on. And they're like, if you're writing it, two pages. Really? Mm-hmm. You don't remember that? Come on, you guys got it. Oh, man. I remember right, having to write a whole paper in elementary in oh, cursive. Man. You know what? I just remembered a story. Remember, I think it was in like uh, one of our high school English classes. We had to sit in the, the computer lab and write a whole like essay oh. that day. Oh, man. Remember, it was last minute, and I got... Pretty oh, upset at the teacher. You were very upset. You were red and flustered. <laughs> because oh, I, I was asking for the listeners at home, I was asking for an extension to write this paper because, unfortunately, I'm not quick on the go, easy writer. Like, oh, me neither. I got this. But she was forcing me to write the paper, and if it wasn't good, she was going to give me an F. So I told her to her face, no, this is stupid. I'm not going to do it. And remember, her eyes teared up so bad. Yeah. I, I, f- I felt you, a little bit of guilt. You literally made that teacher upset. <laughs> she <laughs> she was about to go off the deep end because you just like, this is how it is. This is why I don't like your idea. <laughs> yeah, it's because I felt that it, and that was one of those moments where I just wanted to stick up for myself because I was asking for an extension not to, you know, horse around or anything, but to be a person that's trying on his paper yeah. and rather than just sitting it's... there and being a body not writing a horrible paper because I don't have time to work on it. Yeah, those writing prompts were killer, man. Just be like, oh, here's your question. You got 30 minutes to write it. Oh, well, I hate it. I can't exactly. think of that. 
Another thing, you know, going back to, like, the technology and, like, you know, our society now, or, like, children, more, more or less, is when we get into, for instance, um, let's say I'm feeling mad. And I, now I'm going to type on your, let's say, Facebook, and I'm going to comment, Junior, you look like a tomato. Oh, or you. you look ugly. And I send it to you. Now I said something so horrendous. That nowadays even, like, anyone could look back on what I said. Yeah. But I was 12, you know? <laughs> Let's say oh, I was yeah. 12 yeah. years and, old. And that's the thing. People take things too seriously now. Oh, like, if you sure. do, if you, you can go on my Facebook page and just put as much crap as you want about me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on there. I'm going to put a smiley face. And people be like, thank you. Yeah, or like it. <laughs> Any other one, they're just going to be like, oh, my gosh, the world hates me. Like, no, guys, come on now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's such... Like high toxicity, but at the same time, what I feel like makes these comments more toxic is that everyone is offended, oh, and everyone yeah. has to one up each other. Oh yeah, it's it's so annoying. I mean, that kind of pushed comedy to where comedy is at its all time like scarcity. I feel. Yep, and that is that's terrible. Just because like all the jokes that w- they would make back in the day, it's just like, what do you joke about now? Yeah, I can't say a lot of terms yeah, that know, I would like, say. Oh, the sky's purple. Ha ha ha. No, I'm offended by that. Here's it's how bad blue. it got. Here's how bad it got. I was listening to the radio the one day on my way to work. And in Chicago, they're making a change where when you go down and you see men working on the side of the road, they're literally changing everything where when they put men working, now it's sexist and now it's it's not right to put on a street sign. Yeah, that's, that's 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 a little too far if you ask me. Yeah, I don't like I okay, there is women construction workers, which is fine. I mean, do what you want to do if you if you want to be a girl and you want to do a quote unquote man's job, that is your choice. You go ahead and go do it. Yeah. So but what do you what, what do you change gotta... it to at that point? Yeah. They, well, people I, working, which I guess so. sounds stupid. I'm, but it works. Yeah, it works. I guess <laughs> that, that's not too stupid. All right, we're solving it, issues here. Change it to people working. No exactly. matter what the sign says, it's just such a small detail that maybe I'm agree. not the right person, I but I just I, I don't see it as an insult. But at the same time, well, I don't really care what the sign says. It, you know, I kind of start thinking back to, like, Spanish. You have, you know, some words that will end in O for male and then end in an A for female. But if you were a group of people... A, group people together and it's like mix boys and girls you stick with the os or you know like for an example you stick with like the male uh what was it pronoun or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. you stick with the male ending yeah to encompass them all because so that's just kind of it's, how it's been yeah and, and now what are you gonna change it to something else yeah i i don't understand it because i could understand if it came from a place of malice but it, it's not it's simply, okay, like I, I go up to a group of, like, I have girlfriends. So when I talk to them and I say, hey, guys, that doesn't mean, like, you know, I'm saying, hey, guys are superior. Hold on. Hold on. Did you open the central up with guys? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, we're that's get why, <laughs> that's we're why get I say We're going to get taken offline now. <laughs> yep, you know, I mean, come on. It's hey, not what's like up, you're... you people? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're driving down the road and it says men working and then in small print underneath the whole thing, no women on this job. Yeah, and I, it's it... just a simple fact. Hey, there's people on the side of this road and they're working. Watch out while you're driving your car. Yeah, and just to clarify, like it's not that we don't understand. Let's say the uh, the, the significance of demeaning someone and their. Um, well, how do you say this, their g- gender identity. But it's like we shouldn't be outraged by a lot of things. Yeah. What happened to the culture of we're tough, where we can do anything, we can build anything? Well, that's a big issue now, too, is um, we need to stop raising our boys to be tough. That See, that's another thing. Like, I get expression of feelings because you had a lot of stuff going on back then that but, was never addressed. Yeah, and I think... You know, people just need to get raised a little tougher in general. Not just boys, you know, everybody. Everybody needs to be a little tough in that. Well, okay, look at how people are raised now. If, like, I have a one-year-old, and the other day, you know, I gave her a slap on her diaper because she would not Uh stop jumping on the couch. So I just, 
I said, hey, little bump on the diaper. And then she gave me this look like, why'd you do that? But she calmed down. I didn't go smack her and she fell off and smacked her face on the floor. I didn't, like, beat my child. But now it's like... Discipline, yeah. It, that's what it is. Yeah, and I'm not saying, like, toughen up in, like, a bad way. Like, oh, everybody's a bunch of wimps. It's just, yeah. like, you know, be able to handle some stuff and, right. like, dish it out at the same time. But not be, like, offended by everything that's going on in the world. Exactly. Yeah, life's tough. And you either... Yeah, I'm really... willing I'm, to fall. I'm not trying to be controversial right now at all. You know, I'm not trying to offend anyone or anything going on. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, it's just it's just opinion. And we're just expressing we, a, a we, feeling. Everyone as a whole, yeah. we need to calm down. <laughs> Instead of I agree. jumping up on our feet and getting in someone's face because they may have said something a little bit offending to you, brush it off your shoulder. Let it go. Yeah. I if someone think, made a bad joke, hey, man, why would you say that? I think Don't sometimes post it on social at media. times the biggest thing you can say or do is stay silent. Stay silent. Because you're not falling into their trap of, hey, I called you stupid. Now I want you to call me stupid back because I'm going to feed off. Yeah, they want to see your reaction. Oh, I hate it. Don't just give people that that satisfaction. Don't give them the power. Oh, he's like stupid. All right, cool. Just walk away. What are they going to do to get back to you? Maybe they'll call you stupid again or something. Exactly. It's like, all right, well, you already said that. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we got to get to a point where we realize that to an extent, words have no meaning. Sticks and stones may break my bones, people. You know, like, but words may never hurt me. That's a saying for a reason. And it's because we're su- not supposed to be susceptible or fall into the trap of people yeah. downing us. But these are all scenes that are pretty old. So, like, I don't know. It's just. They're old, but I still think you, they you hold see, some sort yeah. of value. Still think it rings true? Yeah. It doesn't I mean, matter how old the saying is. That's what it means. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you guys got to think about certain things, you know. It is different times now. Yeah. I mean, it's like so if I listened to everybody that told me I was going to fail at something, I wouldn't do anything. Yeah. And I had quite a people in my life tell me, you're not going to make it. I have had people say, you're not Mexican enough. You're not, uh, you're not white enough. You're not, oh, yeah. um, you know, you're, you're not smart enough. You're not dedicated enough. It's always not being enough. But we have to realize that being enough is just accepting ourselves and just going for it. And we have to be willing to fail. Because if we're afraid of failure, we're going to be afraid for people, you know, anyone could step over us and we'll never do anything. We wouldn't be doing this podcast right now if I was afraid of failure, if Junior was afraid of failure, or if Tyler was afraid of failure. You just got to own it, man. Yeah, you got to own it. If I'm afraid of failure or not, you want to tell me how I'm going to fail? Yeah, and well, let I'm me just tell gonna you. tell you to have off. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, I am a failure, and you're a failure, and we're a failure we're because all failures. everyone we're all fails. Life. Like yeah. I said in the beginning, we went to go set up this whole podcast area for us. We failed. We have sound dampening panels. We had really good mics. We had the software. We got the laptop set up. Everything's plugged in, ready to go. Little did I know, you can't use more than one of the same USB mic on Mac OS. Yeah, for those of you who are we had to, to trash podcasts. all of that. And spend a what Over a few budget. hundred dollars more yeah. than the first one oh, to get stuff that would work. That was a fail. But guess what? You're hearing the mics now, and we are and we are on. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, yeah. we got sound effects. We got we sound got effects. effects. It took me a minute to get it to work, but <laughs> yeah. I'm working. You know, I'm working Look on it. So there, so there you go. go. But yeah, guys, you we know. now have professional equipment that can do all sorts of weird stuff like that. And guess what? We had to fail or we had to mess up to fix that. So exactly. If I mess up or I fail, so it's what? a learning experience yeah. for me. And you, if you want to rub it in my face, well, guess what? I fixed the problem. There is a reason why you fall down and get back up again. It's because you. How are you going to improve yeah. if you never did anything bad? Exactly. How am I going to learn that the fire is too hot if I didn't get burned by the fire? That's true. Well, typically, if you see fire, you don't touch it. Well, well you've never seen like fire it. before. Okay, well, maybe an LED <laughs> light bulb. It looks so beautiful and so bright. I want to go and touch it. You well, know, I mean, you just. I don't think LED gets that hot, does it? Oh, LEDs can get extremely hot. Yeah, yeah but they made the switch for like Christmas lights because the old ones definitely got. That's it a hot. different type of LED. Yeah. And it, they they still do get hot. They're Thanks. just so small. <laughs> Thanks, by the way, for trying to disprove. <laughs> hey, I like to be a little bit of a devil's advocate and just kind of challenge oh, that's everybody. Fine. That's fine. 
And because you, because of that, it's okay. Yeah, Every the conversation. It Everyone has their we own opinion. We have a different opinion. That's the That's thing, what it, yeah. guys. Like you know what? And that might open your eyes up to another opinion. And we're friends for a reason, guys, because we don't have the same viewpoints on everything. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of times where between me, Justin, and Junior, where one of us will say something and the other's going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Exactly. Well, it's because I said it out of my mouth, and if you want to give me your opinion, then I guess yours comes out of your mouth and next. It's just that simple. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, I think everyone needs to learn to dis, to learn how to agree to disagree, because I, if you don't learn how to agree to disagree, how am I supposed to know what's right or wrong, if I don't understand both oppositions of what's going on, yeah. or I'm not, I'm not at least open Listen, to guys, the other opposition? How am I supposed to be the best part of this podcast? If you guys can't tell me I'm not. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> See? If you guys didn't tell me I'm not, then all of a sudden all our audience is like, oh, he really is the best. Exactly. Like, we're, come on, guys. We're collective. <laughs> like, together. I'm still the best, but. Yeah, together we, we make said, yeah. the amateur hour. Yeah, no. but, you know, um, just to clarify something, you know, if there really is an issue with, like, certain people, like, I don't know, quality is different, or your life is really being affected somewhere, you know, yeah, go ahead and have some outrage and really step up for yourself and, you know. Yeah, there comes a point in time where you have to say no is no. There's going to be toxic people out there, yeah. and if you don't understand that you create your environment, you're going to be stuck. There's be a difference between someone having a real problem and someone just being an ass. Yeah. If you're out there and you're having a real problem, you need to speak up. You need to let someone know. Or if, let's say, this guy is bullying you at school, you need to let that guy know. You can't just not do it. But, I mean, if there's, say you just didn't like what someone said, so you want to blow it up on social media and make a huge deal about it, that's what we don't need. Yeah, it's like it didn't affect your yeah. quality of life. I thought peace if was anything, forgiveness. If anything, it made it a little bit worse. Exactly. I thought peace was forgiveness. And how are we to have peace if everyone's not pushing forgiveness. Yeah. If I were to be judged on all the failures or, or wrongs I've done, trust me, no one would like me. But it's because us as individuals can grow and be forgiven. We're better people. Sorry, I tell you I hate you all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Follow it up with like a punch too. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> A punch to the arm, and uh, I hate you. And I'm like, I love you too, man. Yeah. You know, I love it when I'm driving down the road and somebody wants to flip me off and scream at me. I have my window up. I can't hear you. But I'll smile and wave even though you look like you're in rage. Oh, and then they man. get even worse. Oh, it's a good feeling. Yeah, there was one time where, like, one dude was, like, super mad at me. I forgot why, but, like, he was pointing his fingers, telling me to roll down my window. You could see he was, like, super angry. And I just looked at him and was like, shook my head. No. <laughs> he's like let me talk to you yeah he was he, I think he stared at me that whole time just yelling yeah. I one, couldn't hear him I wasn't paying attention I shook my head no yeah. you went off my day one time I was driving and this guy was like F you you mother effer blah 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 I'm just screaming at me and I just waited for him to stop talking and I was like I love you too and then I drove away <laughs> <laughs> or what about this like when people say hey get a job I'm like yeah okay I, I have <laughs> that's one. That's good advice. <laughs> Honestly, that's the way to do it, right? Um, to say, you know, get a job. Eat a salad. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that a way? I I think that would be a funny way to put people down without yeah. putting them down. They try to put you down. All right, guys. Well, with that said, we are going to roll our sponsors because we're going to take a quick break. But tune in because these sponsors, let me tell you, we love them. And they love you. So give them a chance, listen to them, and we'll be right back. Tyler, do you like playing board games? I do like playing board games. Well, then I got the place for you. You do, you know. Yeah, and especially if you live in Oxford, Mississippi, to be exact. Oxford Oxford Gamers Den! Join the den! Join the den! They offer daily events ranging from Magic, Dungeons & Dragons, Warhammer, and Malfox. They give discounts to participating customers of any related event. They do tons of single card sales, as well as booster packs for Magic and other TCGs. They also offer a variety of games, board games galore. They have an ever-expanding RPG selection, such as D&D, Pathfinder, 
Vampire the Masquerade, and Star Wars. They also do war games such as Flames of War, 40K, and Malfox. And they also offer an abundance of accessories, paints for modeling, card sleeves, boxes, and binders, as well as playmates. I mean, what more can you ask for, Tyler? I don't know. It seems like they sure have a hell of a lot for us to get interested in. Well, I think you should join the den! Join the den! Join the den! Hey, Justin, you like to sing, right? Give us a little something. Hey, hey, hey! You need to take that over to Lofty Cat Studios. You can record that kind of music there. They got drum kits, acoustic pianos, Fender and Martin guitars. They can help you get your music on all streaming platforms and get you some CDs made. And welcome back. Do you guys ever get tired of all the phones that are coming out nowadays? Well, have you ever bought an iPhone 8 Plus? No. It's absolute garbage. Is it? It is. I hate why, my phone. Why? Why? Tell me about it. Indulge us. I've had iPhones since the iPhone 4, and they've all been great. Battery life was amazing. They're durable. Never let me down. Simple to use. And then I got my iPhone 8, and iPhone OS is iPhone OS. But battery life sucks. It freezes a lot. Maybe I got a dud. I don't know, but my phone is just terrible. And the you know, service, go ahead. I, I I feel like there's not some truth to those statements you just said. Because I remember one time I was playing basketball, and your phone was, like, bent. And your screen, was I think, was shattered. No, 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 no. That was an iPod Touch. Same concept. Yeah. It's not, though. They're, like, they're thin and not good. Well, I hated the iPhone 5S. The battery was always super hot on those things. See, I had an iPhone 5S too, and it was never a problem. Mine literally burned oh, the wire that, yeah. of my charger. My iPhone 5S was my favorite iPhone. No, like it would burn my hands too. Because <laughs> if I used it for like an hour or 30 minutes, my hands were on fire. Yeah. And plus you always see like all the memes about peop- people with like iPhones having to be glued to the wall and whatnot. Yeah, I feel like iPhone has become this, like, elitist group of oh, people. definitely. Like, just like at their ads, they present everything as, like, packaged well and, like, sexy and just, like... And it's the same phone. Yeah. Repackaged. The I don't know, guys. You don't know. The iPhone, what, I think 6 to 8 have the same cases. Yeah. Like, oh, them. yeah, they're all the same. I. Yeah, so it's not even... I could, I could take my case He's off right now. everyone. It's glass, but the shape... The button layout, cameras, I think these are actually the same camera as the 7. It's the same phone. It's I'm, just flashier and has wireless charging. I understand the idea of, like, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. But when you're selling it for, what, like 800 900 bucks, Yeah. That's, that's too much. That's too much. I'm not going to pay for the same phone reincarnated, essentially. Yeah, and they're, that they're trying to, like, guilt you into buying, like, oh, you know, that's old. You need a new one. It's yeah. like, what's? there's no difference to it. Yeah, what's the difference between your iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8S? There is no 8S. There is no, oh, that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, I came from a time oh. where it was just the, the 8S, you know, or like it would be like 5 and 5S. What was the point of that? Siri, I think at some point, but then. When the S, I, I, I want to say the first S they released was for Siri. But then after that, the S version was like, you got this model of a car, and then you got the same car, but it's SS. But they souped it up a little bit and kind of refined yeah. it. So now you get the iPhone, we'll just iPhone 5, iPhone 5S. iPhone 5 had a bunch of button issues. It was a little bit slow. It was the first model they released with the new frame and kind of new design. And then iPhone 5S came out. They did something to the camera, the internals got a little bit better, they fixed all the button issues. It was it was the refined version. I could never tell the difference. I'm not gonna I I get the IP. The IP was getting better, like for the water resistance for, you know, listeners who aren't really familiar with that. But I just I don't know, I don't see what they did like the iPhone X. 
I don't know if you've heard, but they've, uh, I believe the next phone, instead of S or Max, they're going to go with, like, Pro. Yeah. Have you guys heard of that? I did. Um, How do you feel about it? Well, I, I don't feel like it's going to be a Pro. They were talking about the triple lens cameras. I, What is it? The, the Note 10 or the S10 Plus? The, S, they, the they, S10 has uh, three cameras on it. Yeah, so they already got three cameras. It's nothing new. It's maybe Apple. I will say Apple has always had pretty good picture Follow quality. Follow-ups to other people's. That's, that's true, but <laughs> they have refined the software. Yeah, I, 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 guess I will true. say that. When you pull up an Apple camera, it's easy to use. It's fast. But you pull up a Samsung camera... You can see a little bit, I wouldn't say picture quality, because they both have really good quality, but when you put them next to each other, you press the button, they both took the same picture. And depending on your taste, you could be like, well, the Samsung was a little bit sharper, but the Apple had a little bit better color reproduction. They're all so close. Can you really say one's that much better than the other? Maybe if you're a professional photographer, but I'm not. Back in the day, yeah, you could definitely tell the difference. Because well, I think at some point, I was like, man, I really want an iPhone because this camera on the Samsung's really crappy. But nowadays, it's like, you know, they're they're on par. I would say they're on par almost. I don't know if you guys remember back when Windows phones got pretty popular for a little bit of time there. Yeah. It didn't last long. But I bought a Nokia, what was it, 1520? It was the one with the massive screen. And it had... Hands down, the best smartphone camera and the best screen that I've ever had on a phone. And I can still say that's true to this date. I can pull up pictures that I took on that phone on my computer, and I can pull up pictures I took on my iPhone 8 Plus. That Nokia camera looks better than this iPhone 8 Plus camera. I think that that's kind of goes all into the software. Like Google Pixel 3, for instance, I have it personally. It's a great phone. And like the camera, I snap a quick picture. And it's clear as day. And yet you're telling me that's only one camera lens. And that's another thing. They're adding so many camera lenses. I don't need them. I'm not a photographer. That's, I'm, no, I'm not. that's how I thought too. But those those other cameras I definitely do come in handy some, at some point. It depends on what you're doing. If you're, if you're the person that's, say you're going on a little family trip or something, you're taking a few pictures here yeah. and there, or your family's standing in front of a sign or something and you take a picture. Um. But when you're actually trying to focus in on something or you want a wide-angle view, something like that, those other lenses, they do make a really big difference. So, and like my phone, it has a wide-angle, I think, and then it has just like a regular one. So if I want to zoom, it takes capability of the wide-angle because it brings zoom in. And then if you want to take, like, a panoramic, it'll use both of them, the wide angle and the zoomed at the same time, because one brings in the detail of the shot, and the other one opens up how much the phone can see. Yeah. So it's the different lenses. They make a big impact on the picture, but like I, like Justin said, you don't always need it, but if you're spending $1,000 on a phone, do you want it? I would think, yeah, at that point. And um, I don't like how fragile phones are. I don't like it. Like, I, I love the feeling of glass. Like, my Pixel, at this point, I'm just using it without a case because I got tired of not being able to see my phone, not being able to, you know, use it. And, I mean, it's a fairly strong phone. It's Gorilla Glass 5, and that's a pretty strong level of, you know, Gorilla Glass, for those of you who don't know. But... I just, I don't know. I don't like how fragile it is. I don't want to drop it and have it cracked in like a million pieces and then, you know, have to lose out on all that money. I There's a few things I can say about phone durability. An iPhone, some people tell you you drop an iPhone one time, the whole thing shatters, it's garbage. And then other people tell you the iPhone's super durable. Honestly, it depends on how you dropped it, how the phone hit the ground and what you dropped it on because i am not good to any of my phones all my phones go through absolute hell 
So, and most of them have been iPhones, and I've only broken one of them. And the time I broke it was a perfectly flat face down drop to slate tile. So I think that might break any phone you drop. Yes, I don't know. I've dropped. I, I've dropped my iPod actually like that. I'm right on, right on concrete. It was sitting on my lap one day. I was getting up to go to school, and I got up to get out the the I believe the vehicle at the time, and my phone or my iPod just slid across the ground. And that's another thing. Why don't we have iPods anymore? And it, I see actually they have versions of iPod, but no one uses it. It's because we don't need it. Our phones do all of that now. That's true. We have the computers in our pocket. Uh, if you're a little kid, give them an iPod. They can carry it around. But even now, how many little kids do you see walking around with a phone? Oh, my gosh. Do you want to buy your kid a phone and an iPod? Or a phone and an MP3 player? Because maybe you're not Apple people. But why do you need both? Why do we frequently need to buy f- you know, how often do we need to buy phones? Like, your suggestion, like, I personally believe sometimes, actually, I can jump into buying a phone just because the next one looks cooler or I like the screen is bigger. But to what point do you suggest buying a phone for someone? Or, like, buying a new phone? The only time I would suggest buying a new phone is, one, when they stop sending updates to your phone. Then you probably want to update or buy the new version at least. Because when they stop supporting your phone, Apple does this. When your phone gets, I don't know how many years old. I think the the... 6S just lost their um, support. Okay. So all the 6S users. Now we upgrade to iOS 13, which is about to come around the corner. There's apps that aren't going to work on older ones. Stuff might run slower or... Maybe everything's designed to work with the newer processor, more RAM, stuff like that. Now your old phone is unsupported, so it's not going to run those things as bad, or as good, I mean. So that I would recommend upgrading to the newest phone. Typically what I try to do, and you wouldn't need to, I usually, like when I bought my iPhone 8 Plus, it was supposed to be the flagship when I bought it. And... You're probably going to have two-year contract, three-year contract, something like that. So I try to make my one phone last that entire contract. And most of the time I can do that. But I wouldn't spend $1,000 to replace my phone or to open up a new contract. Because one, that's a waste of money that sometimes I don't always have. But two, when I really think about it, you're supposed to have so much processing power. Your camera is so good. The next phone, it has twice as much processing power, more RAM. It can run more apps at the same time. Camera's better. But I don't need it. Yeah, I honestly, I don't even see the updates. Like, iPhone looks so much alike. Every single iPhone that, why aren't they supporting a success when everything looks the same? Is it really running even faster? It, I don't even tell. Depends on the person. I guess so. Because I could tell a lot. But I'm a computer nerd. I'm, I usually really get into all the technology that I have. I do a lot more than most people. Justin, he picks up his phone. He goes on Instagram, sends a Snapchat every 15 seconds, and it's super annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But a snap. He's, not gonna, he's not really going to notice. But when I'm on my phone and say I'm watching YouTube, and all of a sudden I get a work email that comes in. I switch over to my work email. My newer phone has enough RAM to keep everything running. And then I switch back to YouTube. The video keeps playing. And then I'm going to be like, well, shoot, let me look this up on the Internet. And then if you have enough power in your phone, enough RAM in your phone, you can keep all that stuff working at the same time. And then you could switch back and forth, whereas older phones I had, when I switched over to the internet and then went back to my YouTube video, sometimes the YouTube app would relaunch, and then I have to find the video and resume, or I'd get into my email, and all of a sudden I was like, well, shoot, that was an important work email. 
now I have to reload it and find it again to reply to it. That's that's where you get to the point where you're like, well, it's time to upgrade the phone or now the processor is going to really matter because it's giving me more power to run more stuff at the same time, more RAM to run everything at the same time. Yeah. So it, it depends on the person. I can say like the one time I seen tech for a phone really switch was in when I got my Samsung Galaxy S8. And you can dual screen and you could text while at the same time scroll the internet or watch a YouTube video. Now that is when I've noticed like, okay, this is tech. This is where things are changing for the phone industry. But then also I'm like, how far are we going to innovate? phones like what do we need like you know how they tried the samsung folding phone and that was a complete dud well first of all that thing looks ugly it, yeah. to me that's an impractical design how they're trying to do like a whole new razor where it looks like the old razor and flips into a, like a touchscreen phone yeah that's smart that's what we need because these phones are getting way too big to be put in our pockets yeah the coolest thing i've seen lately was uh it was some chinese phone the huawei i think uh, i don't know but it had a screen on the back of the phone. Oh, wow. So instead of flipping your phone out, now it's twice as wide and it turned into a tablet. You want a tablet, go buy a tablet. If you want a folding phone, you're asking for it to break. But if you're taking a picture or let's say you want to use your wide angle shot for a selfie with a few friends... When you can turn your phone around and there's a usable screen for something like that on the back. Yeah, you're just pretty much using, utilizing like, the back. That's an awesome camera. feature. But these other ones where um, they want full screen on the front and they make this camera that notches out the top. Oh, I, I feel like so that's... so ugly. They're going to break. It's cool because you get all the screen on the front. And, okay, Samsung's, they did the hole punches. Yes, that's beautiful. I like it. And it's durable. For the people that did the ones where the camera comes up the top or they slide the phone up so the camera appears, you're adding more and more moving parts. So I I don't like that. The more it moves, the more it breaks. Now, I will say, going back to Apple, and lately I haven't been an Apple fanboy because my iPhone 8 Plus is really letting me down, unfortunately. But in the past, I would have been a super Apple fanboy With my iPhone 4. My iPhone 4 was the best iPhone I've ever had. Because I had a couple of friends that had an iPhone like 3GS or something like that. And all of a sudden the iPhone 4 came out. And I had it when it was brand new. And it was way better than the iPhone 3. Way better. It was faster. It was more responsive to what you were doing on it. There was just nothing about it that even resembled the iPhone 3. Yeah, it had a different shape to it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was when they, that was the first time they went to like the boxy kind of, instead of having rounded edges, they had like a, I don't know, straight corner on it. Um, Battery life better. Software, once they came out with the iOS update, way better. And then design was really cool. But the biggest part, for me anyway, some people say that they broke their iPhone 4s really easy, but mine yeah. was super durable. Oh, I've seen you toss that thing. <laughs> uh huh. I've seen it fly out your pocket so many times. And it was like, with the first introduction of glass on glass almost, mm-hmm. that's the first that I've ever seen where it had a glass back, and it felt beautiful. So... um story about my iPhone 4. Me and my brother were taking our four-wheelers over to my grandma's house. You could, like, ride down the train tracks and then jump on a road and go right to my grandma's house. We pulled out on the road, and my brother just starts smashing the gas and flying through the gears, and I was just like, well, I'm not losing this race. I did the same thing. I blew past him on my dirt bike. My phone falls out of my pocket Of course it does. (laughs) And my brother ran it over with the four-wheeler. Now, I will say I had a uh, pretty 
good case on it. Yeah, you had that case that had like screws in it, right? It was like oh that's my very great. Gosh. It, it I had... hated that thing. I'm not gonna lie. It looked hor well, it looked kinda cool, but then I was like, that's too bulky. My pants would just fall down with <laughs> right, right, right. putting it in my so pocket. It, it was like an armored case that was meant <laughs> for like military use of your phone. But when you're talking about on a dirt bike doing about 90 to 100 miles an hour. I mean, I'm in fifth gear, hitting a rev limiter. It can't go any faster. And it wasn't stock. And so we're talking 90 to 100 miles an hour. My phone falls out of my pocket, hits the asphalt, bounces, and then my brother ran it over. (laughs) And he's doing about the same speed as me and throws it up in the air again. I pick it up. The case is torn to crap. Um, it had a layer of gl- Gorilla Glass that was on the case, not the phone. Completely shattered out. The phone, I took the six screws out of the case, split it in half, took the phone <laughs> out. Yeah, I did say six screws in my case, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I took the phone out, and it had some scratches. No cracks. Glass was fine. Got a toothpick and dug the dirt out of the charging port. Pressed the home button, turned right on, opened right up, worked just like it should. Give me one phone that'll do that. I remember you had the slider phone. <laughs> do you remember your slider phone? Yeah, but that wasn't a smartphone. I know, but it, that was, you said give me one phone, and that's the first thing I thought of. We're, we're talking about smartphones, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I oh, had to man, I had to toss that in there. There's one a friend had what, what was it like Olympus or something? It might have been like a Samsung, I can't remember, but that one was pretty durable. I remember him just like whipping it across fields, just like this thing won't break. Yeah. <laughs> or like the Samsung active that they have now. Or it's like that, it's pretty much just that a case. That may have been me. Because I remember one time we went over to our friend Andrew's house. Andrew I'm gonna use their nicknames. Andrew Bean Torpedo Tits. Um we took my phone and we were playing football with it, and we got to the point where like, dude, this phone won't break. We were so I mean, we were stupid and young. We took my phone and whipped it against a tree as hard as we possibly could. Looked like the phone exploded. The battery came out. The back came off. The keypad was all like mangled. Literally, you put the battery back in. You squeezed all the plastic clips back together. Basically, reassembled the phone. Held the power button. That bitch turned right back on. And worked absolutely perfect. Those things were amazing. It would not die. I remember we would kick your phone. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, at gym. You just slap just it out it. of my hand because why not? Because you're holding your phone. Let's slap it out of someone's <laughs> hand. And then Justin kicks it across the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I want to get into going back. Kind of once I want to go back and talk about my first time ever meeting Junior. And that was actually, I believe, history class. Do you remember that? In seventh grade. It was like a social studies class. Yeah. It was social studies. And I don't know. I think we worked on a project together. Was it? Probably. It was like one of the few Mexicans who were like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? I remember we made, uh, we had Puerto Rican rice. When we had to do a country, and I believe, yeah. I, I don't remember it was what like country World Day or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I had brought Philippines. In, yeah, <laughs> and I brought in Puerto Rican rice, and I was like, "Wait a minute, you Mexican?" He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "You Puerto Rican too?" He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> and like from there, we just became friends. And you were so quiet though. I, oh yeah. Maybe because you were new, but at the same time, I mean, I was a wild one back then. I mean, uh, Tyler, do you remember the first time? Wait, You didn't tell the whole story, though. You were in, like, a self-contained classroom for a little bit. <sighs> and they, like, let you free a little bit. Like, yeah, you have yeah, they let classes. me out of it. It was, it was their program for kids that, I guess, fell under average. So because I had C grades. And there were at the time, they were five-star for middle school. And they're like, well, you know what? We're just going to put them in a class. And that class was like a jail cell. And I hated it. So when wasn't I got I, out, was I in there too? I was in you, there too, I, wasn't I? No, I think you were. I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, like, you, that's I kind think of seventh a, grade. That's kind of a bad idea, though, because you got oh, all horrible. kind of kids acting up. I was learning together. addition and subtraction. It was pretty much like you know jail. 
Yeah. <laughs> but still, what I'm saying is like, you got this kid acting up, and you got this other kid that acts up, and they're just feeding off of each other. Oh, yeah. Well, let, let, let me tell you. You had to be like an alpha dog. Yeah, you survival had to, of the fittest. At yeah, survival of the fittest. Like, it's like. Who could do the most I can't up show them. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I was rolling down hallways. <laughs> oh, I remember that. I was, uh, you know, screaming real loud and, like, saying, like, you know, random stuff or making fun of my friends real you loud. You know, or... the funniest thing ever, um, remember when the way you used to sneeze just to be stupid? Oh. <laughs> I'll was... try and say something while I sneeze. He would sneeze and scream, or you bastard, just just something bad. He would sneeze and just scream it at the top of his lungs in the middle of the sneeze. And the funniest part was there was a teacher. His name was Mr. Landis. He would like, oh, bless you. Yeah. He, he was completely oblivious to it. He never And the entire on, classroom the is rolling, laughing. <laughs> and he's like, all right, guys, calm down. Bless you, Justin. Calm down. And that was being the product of that seventh grade class. <laughs> You know, you were in there for a while, though. Yeah, I was in there seventh and eighth grade. It was two years. Yeah, because when they put me out in real society, I couldn't handle, (laughs) I couldn't handle the class. Real society. Yeah, I I was free for the first time, and you can't expect an inmate to be ready for the world, (laughs) ready for the world when you had them contained all this time with a bunch of loonies. Like I was, you know, I, I wasn't completely wild, but I was just hyper. I was very hyper. I remember a lot of times. Uh, well, it, one part of it was hyper. I mean, come on, we're in middle school, going into high school. When uh, everyone's got energy. Everyone's going to be doing stuff. Everybody's going through classes. some like weird stuff. Everybody's yeah. yeah. And and honestly, if we're being honest, with me and Justin, we were your quote unquote class clowns. Yeah. If if the teacher did something stupid, or somebody, I don't know, just. We would amplify it and be like, ha, that was the funniest thing in the world. Even though someone just, like, accidentally dropped their pencil, we would make a huge deal out of it. Oh, yeah. That was that was a blast. I think, mean, Junior, we had a few fun times. Did oh, you, definitely not. Remember biology? Uh, that's that's <laughs> some Mr. Wild stuff. Class, <laughs> Mr. We might get in trouble for that now. Yeah, we, I won't, we won't say what we, you know, what we did. We'll but... say what other people did. Okay. Yeah. So, like, one dude... Peed in a pot, killed all of this dude's plants. Oh my That's gosh. what I was going to bring wild. up. What, a tampon was thrown into a fish in tank? In a fish tank. Mm. Oh my god! Is that what killed them or was it the dude slapping it? Oh, I, I think it was the guy slapping <laughs> it. <laughs> if I remember correctly, somebody took a random vial out of the cabinet and also dumped that into the fish oh, tank. Wow. So I didn't know about on, that. I didn't know about that either. Depending on what was in that vial, that though is pretty bad. That's but horrible. that may have been what killed the fish. Screaming. Wow. Screaming! I there was just like someone would say ran. Now, now that one wasn't me because I grew up by that time. I do remember one time there was uh, one of our friends. His name was Casey. So shout oh, out if okay. you're listening. Um, we would be going through class, and he was one of the class. He was one of the class clowns. So we would be being stupid. The teacher would be completely occupied by something, and all of a sudden we would just like whisper across the room like, "Hey." Hey Justin, hey, and then all of Miller just fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then Mr. Kroll would turn around and he'd be like, "Who said that? That was uncalled for. Who said that?" And then we would just all sit quiet, like absolutely nothing happened. And Mr. Kroll, he was an awesome teacher. Oh, sweet guy, he was incredible. Oh, he, we need to do a wellness check because you know he was the, guy. the nicest guy alive. I remember loved that teacher, but. He would let us get away with everything, oh, so yeah. we would keep doing it. Nice. Well, that that was his whole philosophy. I think <laughs> yeah. was just like like you learn yourself. Yeah, right. Like for instance, the and it worked because when you didn't want to pay attention and you failed the class, that's what he would tell you. Yeah, yeah. And like you were in class and you decided to say "f you" and pee in my plants and kill my fish. Well, he didn't know. Let's let's be real. He didn't know. Well, he knew. I don't so. know I think how he knew. He knew, he knew someone killed the fish. Yeah, that one. Of course. He, um, was so, he was so sad. He was not even like, it was. Well, there was also the one guy that was like walking around in the back with his pants around his ankles. Oh, that and, was so weird. Yeah, so, so I, weird. I think he, he knew about that because I think he called him like, oh, it's Mr. Pants or something. At some yeah. point. Mm-hmm. And it's not like he was showing much, but like the dude would just, yeah, his boxer shorts. It was weird, guys. I, I 
I think that's part of the reason why I hated high school. But at the same time, like, I would never, ever, I'd never seen that a day in my life. <laughs> and these were kids, I, I wasn't in one class, but for instance, I was in a normal class, and this is normal people. I, we, I don't know, that's like the wildest stuff. Do you remember in, we were in an environmental club? What did we do? <laughs> I don't remember, man. Okay. All we did was dump paper. The oh, recycled yeah. paper. How is that environmental by yeah. any means? Like, I, I get that. recycling. But that's all we did. And then we'd have the meetings where we just sat there. Yeah. It was just like a meeting in the morning. We just show up. And what did we do? Like, we did right, uh, Are we going to dump the paper today? Yeah. yeah. We, would, we um, would go dump the paper in the dumpster. And then we would have this outdoor session where we would all go sit in the grass out in the sun. And it was either bullshitting with each other or the teacher, would, the teacher would have some kind of lesson it was in different groups do you remember like because i was with you mm. and uh, one of your friends and then it was um i forgot who else and then like we'd be at jason, certain I times think jason was jason he was the leader yeah yeah, yeah he was the yeah we're, head honcho yeah like and he would he would get pulled from class and then it was in certain groups we would pull pulled out all class. the class uh, yeah, you don't remember that? I thought it was in the morning. Like It was in the morning, morning. but when we would dump the... I um, remember doing a lot of it. It was like home home base or like SRT. It yeah. Was, it was during... I don't remember doing anything during You don't that. remember? No. Yeah, we'd get let out an SRT and we got to go around collecting. I thought it was in the morning during like... What was it like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays? You'd go in and... Sometimes. Whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever, whatever time it was. It was. Yeah. it was crap. It was worthless. It was stupid. Yeah, it was... It hey, was someone unfair. had to dump that paper. Yeah. I mean, I, it I did do the environment a service, but at the same token, like, that's all we did. Yeah. We didn't do much. Do you remember a time when we... Okay, actually, I got a story. Oh, let's hear it. Do you remember the time... we were? Me and Junior were in chemistry together. And... Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> and we were, uh, we were partners. We Let me tell you, we cooked perfect aspirin. We just made it perfect. Uh, the professor was like... You guys just made aspirin. And we're like, for real? He's like, yeah, you made real aspirin. It was like part of the project. Yeah, well, that was the whole lab. But most importantly, he was like, of all the ones, you guys are the only ones that we could, like, actually take. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. and he was a cool, chill teacher. and uh, Well, a little too cool and chill. Yeah, a little bit too cool and chill. We won't get into that. But, I mean, yeah, he was a cool guy. Let's say this. I was completely failing, and I had a little talk with him. And I said, yo, tell me what I need to do to pass your class. And he said, do a couple of these papers. I'll give you extra credit. I don't know how the math works out, but I got a 59.01 in that class. And they gave me the credit for it. He gave us credit for keeping our notes. (laughs) Do you remember that? Yeah, I think so. But uh, there's another story. I don't know if you remember when we were one day. I know where this is going. My we're. Bunsen burners. If you don't know what Bunsen burners are, they're pretty much like these devices that release. Uh, it's almost like a stove. It's gas, obviously. It's a fire. You're starting yeah, a single fire. Single flame. Yeah, single flame. A buddy of ours in the class was having trouble with a Bunsen burner. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're just not lowering the flame. The flame was too high. It was cooking his chemicals the wrong way. And I said, I got this. Everyone step back. I got this. <laughs> I walk up to the Bunsen burner. I start lowering the, there's a knob underneath the Bunsen burner, and I start lowering the knob, slowly turning it, just inch by inch. And I'm like, the flame's going down, guys. The flame's going down. You just got to keep, and I kept going and going and going. Little did I know that that knob was just loosening. And as it was loosening, it was falling out of place. So the knob almost completely fell out of place, and the fire went down (laughs) instead of up. So my hand caught on flames <laughs> for at least like five minutes. Or no, no, not five minutes. It yeah, was I was like, about to say, whoa, man. No, it was like a good 30 seconds, though, because I had to whip yeah, my hand. Yeah, you shook that thing. lost all your finger it, hairs. Yeah, my finger hair <laughs> was burned off. And everyone in the class freaked out for a second and was laughing afterward when I was okay. But that was the dumbest thing I did. They had to turn the gas off because I, I didn't know. I didn't know. How do you work a Bunsen burner? I, you just... Turn the screw. It's just it gets lower. The flame gets lower. I said, "You just don't know what you're doing." But my fingers caught on fire. 
I remember in the same class we were doing a lab, and for whatever reason we were experimenting with the gases you get after you burn wood. So um, we had a giant box of popsicle sticks, and we all had like some cooking pans. What you were supposed to do is light a match, light a piece of wood on fire, let it burn, but they had like a cone over the top of it collecting the smoke. And then we were somehow analyzing the smoke. Well, that's what everyone else was doing. Um, I had, if you've ever made a fire pit before, where you lay the wood up in a cone in a spiral, and then you light the bottom and the fire travels up the center, yeah. and you get a really good bonfire. Well, I had um, a big old pile of sticks all piled up, crossed and everything, and up in a big cone, and I lit the bottom, and I had, all of a sudden I had about like a, uh, I don't know, 12, 14 inch tall bonfire in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and of course. Next next thing I know, the teacher's coming up behind me. He's like, "Oh, what the hell are you doing?" And he takes a. He... <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and oh. "You know, that's something Tyler does. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true for those of you at home." Uh, and I'm just like, "Well." I'm burning the wood. That's what you told me to do. I made a good <laughs> fire. And he, the sinks in there, they had a little, like, hose, a little foot-long hose that you could, like, aim around the sink. He turns it on full blast, and he shoots my fire, soaks the whole table. The students around me all got soaked. And everyone's screaming, and everyone's like, oh, my God, what's going on? And I'm just trying to make a fire. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want to hop outside of high school around that era, and I don't know what time. Okay, so Junior and Tyler, they were both into BMXing, and they'd BMX a lot with their buddies. And now, I'm not a BMXer. Now, for those of you at home who don't know what a BMX bike is, it's pretty much just a normal bike, but it's a lighter frame, so that way it enables you to do tricks. There's not really... Like it's got a bit of a different shape to it, yeah, compared to like a mountain bike or normally they're kind of shorter for what I've the, seen. The geometry of the bike is made for you to be able to easily throw it around, yeah. yeah, but I had a mountain bike, and it's heavy, and it's made to go up mountains, so one day. My buddies. Well, that's what he thinks, but really, it was yeah. a cheap Walmart bike. My my buddies come <laughs> come by, and they they come over here, and they're like, "Hey, let's go hang out. Let's, let's go, go to the trails. Yeah, let's go to the trails. trails." I'm like, "What trails?" <laughs> little do I know, it's almost like a little club, because behind this like forested area in our neighborhood, they built trails out of dirt. So they, you know, they have like these heavy ramps, and we had like, a full blown track going on. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, to the credit of the other people that. Um, that Built really started it. off. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, of course, there was other people than just us. They they really yeah. did. It was most a group of, the of like ten it. people but. that would go in and they would be a max and they'd hang out. And... I'd, I'd just show up and wreck their jumps. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, so there was beautiful jumps made. So they're like, "Why don't you hit that one?" It was a big one, and I was it like. Was... It was just a little pit. No, that, that's the second one you told me about. Oh. But they originally <laughs> wanted me to hit this big hill, and I'm like, I'm not oh, gonna that was make the, that. That was the entrance, man. No. It wasn't a big jump. It was just like you go up there and then you like boost off of it, get some speed. Oh, mm. Well, their little jump was pretty pretty hefty, let me tell you. But I'm like, I'm not going to do that. No, no. And they're like, yes. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I'm going to fall and break something, okay? So the, there's the pit, as Junior said. And in the pit, <laughs> it's it's pretty deep pit, let me tell you. I don't know why, it, but I guess you're supposed to ramp off it and you know get to the other side of it. So I get ready. They pump me up. They say, you got this. I say, you sure? They're like, yeah, you just got to lift the front a bit when you're going up. So then that way, you know, you don't, you know, you don't hit anything and you'll be fine. I was like, okay, all right, I got this. I get on the bike, ready, sweating, excited, (laughs) heart pumping, blood flowing. I, everyone's staring at me because it's my first jump. I say, I got this. I go on. I start my pedaling. And as I start pedaling, all of a sudden, I'm going up. As, I'm going fast as I'm going down the pit. Now it's coming up, and it's time for the, the jump. And my tire hits the edge. <laughs> and when my tire hits the edge, 
it flings me forward <laughs> until my face, I literally <laughs> ate dirt. This, <laughs> when you're going up the jump, you got to balance yourself. You got to kind of lean back a little bit and control how your bike singles in the air. Justin's pedaling his ass off, but he's leaning over his bars. It was epic. So when he hit the jump, all his weight's forward. He just went right over, face first fast. into the pit. It was fast. It you was... guys told me to hit it fast and hit it hard. He was like, go he fast. He went fast and he went hard. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember you going that fast. Oh. It's your story. It, that's what you think, man. I was like a peacock, dude. I was running. I was, actually, I was an ostrich, my friend. I was going to the extents you don't even know, okay? <laughs> I, in my head, okay, I yeah, was yeah. going 50 miles an hour. You don't even know. <laughs> but, yeah, I totally failed that. I hit my face dead on the dirt. I had dirt in my mouth. I was spitting it out. <laughs> I, oh, I went from, you know, this Hispanic guy, and now I look like it came out of a mine shaft because, like, my face was just filled with dirt. Oh, my gosh. It was in my teeth. For like a week, it was hilarious. No, we've all it been was, there. I, it was hilarious. I've had multiple accidents. I've, I've gone over a jump and then just like slid across the landing, just, <laughs> oh my God. just covered have, in dirt. We have <laughs> no one saw accidents. it, but like everybody saw all the dirt on me. It's like, did you see? Yeah, did junior, it? junior comes back all dirty and like, what do you? What'd you do? <laughs> you know, you're just you're just looking at him like confused for a second, oh my like. Gosh. Did you did you crash? What what happened? Well, I played it off. <laughs> Everyone saw. He played mine. it off like, oh, I was uh, I, I was I was fixing that ramp. I had to to get up a little bit, and I got dirty. I mean, I get that y'all been there, but you never, no one's seen you. <laughs> <laughs> I was in front of everybody. Everyone well, was watching me. Everybody's seen me. It was my first time. I've I've eaten it other times, but definitely someone saw me. Oh, well, times. yeah. When you crashed and no one saw you, you got back on your bike, and you're like. All right, let's keep going. You, you just, you you turn your head, you, okay, no one saw. Let's hit another well, jump. Well, most importantly, it was like, it's like a big train going. You got to get out the way as soon as you Oh, yeah, it. for sure. Um, I, I actually had a, a few myself, a, a really good one, which we'll get to. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, we had, like, like Junior said, we got a train going. Well, I'm going over a tabletop, and I hook up my pedal on the lip so i did like a weird bounce and i had to put my foot down and catch myself well i ended up whipping my back tire around and i ended up facing the other way so at the, and i'm just sitting there like oh shit i almost crashed and then all of a sudden uh arlen he comes up no man you got the story wrong i'm not t- i'm not telling that story no not that one arlen comes up and he's 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 going and he hits head on on my on the front of my bike like we he we crashed into each other, and he smacks his throat on my hand. No, bars. you got the story wrong. No, this no, because this was a big controversy. So we had a flow of path. I remember Uh-oh. this. I remember this clearly. I somehow got turned um, around. No, and no, I didn't no, know what I was no. doing. We had a flow. I was of path. going the wrong way. You went the wrong <laughs> way. Arlen was going where he was supposed to go. I know. I somehow got turned around. I, I went know. Wrong, you just I, decided to go to the opposite path for whatever reason. I don't know. I you, just know I hit the jump, was, I slid out, and I'm oh, like, well, shit, I, I got to keep going. Believe. And all of a sudden, I'm like, damn, I'm going the wrong way. We crashed. Oh, my god. You goodness. totally took him out, though. Oh, I took that him was, out good. He he. That was 100% your fault on that His one. fork hit my Tyler, front wheel. Tyler, you built like a truck. <laughs> oh, I didn't budge. This kid's a little twig. I'm, I'm kind of – I was – this was before I got fat, but I'm bigger than everyone. I was – Well, I, I mean, you're also like five years older than everyone, too. Two years, maybe. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the point, whatever. He hits me, and I didn't budge one bit. The only thing that happened was he hit my brake lever and smashed my finger. So I was like, ow. And I was like totally focused because my hand hurt. And I look up, and he's like choking. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? And uh, his brother, Alton, he comes up like, dude, why are you going the wrong way? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I got turned around. I don't know what I'm doing. And everyone's flipping out. And uh, oh and I'm just gosh. like, don't worry about me. What's what's wrong with Arlen? You know, whatever. And so we get him to calm down and start breathing. He smacked his throat on my handlebars. So he knocked the wind out of his self, like hit his chest, hit his throat. He's yeah. choking. 
And then um, everyone gets calmed down, and we're like, okay, it's cool now. I'm, I'm not actually killing Arlen here. <laughs> like, I, I, thought we, I thought we were getting ready to call 911 and have some have someone come get him or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my god. But, yeah, it was it was bad. <laughs> Only Tyler. Only yeah. I, I somehow got I'd turned around. Go I started going the wrong way and just head-on collision. No, it was, couldn't have got worse. I was too chicken for that stuff. And after you guys tricked me, I was like, nah, I'm not doing that ever again. <laughs> and then uh, there was there was another time we went. I, I can't remember who all was there. I don't I don't think Justin was there. Junior, you might have been there. It, it was when I hit the tree. Right there. I know I was there with my cousin. Alton was there. Um, I come in the drop-in. I got my speed. I hit a double. And then there was another part. Where it turns and you hit another, like, what would they call it? A layup? I don't remember. You kind of went up a curved ramp and then you came up flat and got up there. Um, But anyway, I take a couple laps around the track. I'm doing really good. And then we kind of start racing a little bit. We get a chain going. My cousin, he's following, like, right on my tail. So I'm, like, trying to go faster. I'm pedaling, I'm pedaling, I'm pedaling. I come in to drop in again, and I hit the double, and I don't know what happened. Too fat for my bike, going too hard, I don't know. Blew out my back tire, kicked my wheel out sideways, and I went straight head-on for a tree. Smacked that tree so hard that there was a leaf that was on the side that literally got (laughs) imprinted in my shorts. And then I guess my bike flew somewhere, I don't know. And my cousin, he's... He said he was ready to call 911 because it's been like a solid five seconds. And I'm like not getting off the ground. I, I face planted this tree and I got knocked out instantly. And then I, I guess I start to wake up and I pick my head up and I'm like looking around. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Why is everyone staring at me? And then he's like, dude, you crashed. And I'm like, is my bike okay? You know? Oh <laughs> and then they're gosh. like, well, no one cares about your bike. Or like, are you okay? <laughs> and I'm just like, I feel fine. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's the same place where, I think that's where I broke my first bone. That's where I broke my leg. And then I rode back like a mile to a friend's house. I was there for that. Yeah. I man. was there. Oh, I've never seen a kid in so much pain, but for some reason he got on a bike okay, and rode it. Okay, you weren't there? Because I wasn't. I played it off. I broke it. I walked to the hammock, laid down in the hammock. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I got to sit this one out. Yeah, but then you rode your bike home. Yeah, but I wasn't. I was there. I wasn't expressing any pain, man. You were expressing pain. I was not expressing. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Well, it was only the fibula. I just turned my leg a certain way, and it, it was like it never happened. I know, but you were like acting like you twisted your ankle or something. Yeah, yeah. Then everyone does. But that. I wasn't. I wasn't. Bringing but then, the leg yeah, obviously, he just. It's it's one of those moments where like, oh, I just got to sit down and play this off. And then you rode his bike home. No, I was like, I'm gonna sit because I I've, I skateboarded at. <laughs> Or, yeah, I did skateboarding at BMX and all that, and it's like you eat, you eat it all the time, and you just uh-huh. walk it off. He, so I was trying to walk that one off. <laughs> he he did one of those things where like, okay, you know you, you you twisted your ankle or something. You're like, okay, that hurt, but I'm walking it off. He he did one of those play it off things and went over and like sat down for a little bit. Little did he even know he broke his leg. Yeah, <laughs> but you still. We rode back to your house. It wasn't my house. It was uh, Alton's. Was it Alton's? Yeah. We rode to someone's house. That was, yeah, that was a good one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, we, me and Junior have another crazy story together. Oh, we man. were filming for uh, his class. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. This is... <laughs> and uh, it was. It's easy stickers. I wasn't in his, yeah, I wasn't in his class, but Junior's like, I've always been a creative guy. And Junior's like, hey. Want to be a cameraman? Want to help me film? And I was like, yeah, sure, man. Like, I'm, I'm totally down. We have another good friend of ours named Eugene. He was there. And as well as uh, another individual. I qu- can't quite recall the name. And so anyway, we're recording this video. And it required some heavy stunts of Eugene in the back of a truck jumping out and saying some sort of line. But... As the guy's about to jump out, you know, it's, it's like I said, hefty action. <laughs> <laughs> so Eugene jumps out the back of the truck. It's, you know, comes point for his, his time to, to time to shine. And he comes out and he lands on his legs real quick. But then he goes, 
ah, he starts screaming and everyone's like, what's going on? What's, what's wrong? What's wrong, Eugene? Like, tell me where it hurts my leg. I think I broke it. He starts screaming and we're like, oh my gosh, this kid broke his leg. I'm like, I didn't see him twist his ankle and I'm still recording. He's like, I broke it. I think I broke it. And then we're like, can you move? Don't move. And then we start, you know, kind of feeling. I'm like, I don't feel anything out of place. No, it's broken. And he's screaming in pain. And, like, he's like, oh. And, you know, he's got a disgruntled look on his face. And then I'm like, nothing's broken. Try maybe standing on it. I don't I don't suggest that <laughs> if you feel like <laughs> you broke something. And then he's like, it's in my calf. And I was like, what do you mean it's in your calf? He's like, yeah, in the back of my calf. It hurts. And I'm like, oh. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it feels like a twisting pain. And I'm like, you mean you got a cramp? He's like, what do you mean? And like, he's spinning around, acting dramatic. He's like, I don't understand you. We're like, you got a cramp in your leg? He's like, what is that? And then we explain to him that it's just this muscle tightening. The dude was in a crouched position the whole time behind the truck. You know, like one of those crouch positions, like where someone's squatting because they got to use the bathroom or something, and then he's gonna hop out. And because of that, it put strain on his muscle to where he got a cramp in his leg. But he <laughs> thought he broke his leg, and we were almost gonna call nine one one. We didn't know what to do. We had no clue what to do. I just don't know. That was one of the craziest things I've ever done in my entire life, <laughs> or craziest things I've experienced. I can tell you about a few funny uh, trips from Justin's house to Eugene's house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> One in instance, we, we hung out quite a bit. Tyler's yeah. spending the night, right? And my buddy Eugene, he lived maybe four houses down. It was a, like a, a block away. Bit. Yeah, maybe a block. It wasn't too long. But we decided one day, we're like, hey, you know what? Let's hang out. You know, I was like, let's go hang out with Eugene. He's like, yeah, let's hit him up. So we had a lot of uh, soda that day, okay? It was a lot. I enjoy Mountain Dew. Tyler enjoys Mountain Dew. And <laughs> I had to go to the bathroom. And it really hit me, like, when we just barely started jogging to his house because it was late at night. Night gets creepy. We didn't want to be walking at nighttime. No, so we're jogging. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like, Tyler, I got to pee. He's like, you got to pee? I said, yeah, we got to hurry up. So I start sprinting faster. <laughs> but as I'm sprinting faster, my bladder cannot hold. <laughs> so a, slort, a, a slight drippage starts to ensue. And all of a sudden it becomes a waterfall <laughs> down my leg. <laughs> so by the time I get to Eugene's house... I have a stream, <laughs> a stream of, you know, just urine. Urine. This, this kid's pants are just soaked. It all came out, every bit of it. Tyler had soaked. this app on his his iPhone or iPad, iPod, sorry, and and it was like a, a you know where you do the heat. It was like a, a heat oh, really? set, heat vision. Yeah, when he put on the heat vision, you see the stream. Because <laughs> it was yeah. freshly warm. Wait, can we take a second? Because that has to be pretty advanced. Exactly. For an app to do that through a, a regular camera? Yeah. I, it I was when they first introduced the iPod Nano like with the camera. It was like one of the filters on the screen. I don't, I don't know. I'm just impressed by that. Because like, you have I no other by that. I don't no know if other it was sensor. real. It's, it, it, had, it, it couldn't have been real heat yeah, vision. No. It just made it look like yeah. it. But it totally highlighted oh, that's like, it his highlighted pants. the pee. It <laughs> highlighted the pee. And I was like, well, I got to run back and change. But I still <laughs> emptied out the tank at his house. And then later that day, Tyler wrote, you know, he he decided to write home. Oh, this is a good one. Hold on. I... Now, now, now the viewpoint changes. Oh, yeah. The... It, this one's this one's on me, so everyone knows at this point. Well, that uh, I have bad eyes. If you <laughs> yeah, want to talk about my vision at nighttime, it's even worse. I don't know how we even drive at night. Um, oh. So, <laughs> me and Justin, it, this was a complete. It was a different night, but we're running over to Eugene's again. I got my bike this time. Justin's running down the sidewalk as fast as he can trying to keep up with me. And, you know, I'm doing a shoulder check every once in a while, and I'm going back. <laughs> I end up veering off the sidewalk, and there's, you know, by the fire hydrant where it has, like, the little, you can pop the cap to see into the water pipes? Well, yeah. I hit one of those with my tire, and I'm I'm going fast. 
Um, my back wheel comes off the ground. I'm on kind of like a like an endo kind of thing, trying to regain control of my bike. I look up in front of me. Perfect time. My face smacks a damn stop sign so hard. <laughs> Yeah, I, can't, I I fall right off the bike. I'm just laying there in the grass. And I wasn't worried. I was <laughs> laughing. Oh, oh, Justin's <laughs> laughing his ass off, getting ready to pee his pants again. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny because we I were just both see laughing. this, and I wasn't expecting it. I'm just focused on jogging. I'm like, all I can boy, remember is the sound. It was so loud when oh, I yeah. smacked into that stuff. It was like sign. a cartoon. It reminded me of a cartoon because that thing moved. It shifted back and forth, and as it was waving, it was giving, like, the alloy <laughs> noise, you know? Oh, it, yeah. I it, mean, Oh, my goodness. That was the funniest, one of the funniest experiences. Probably, like, I don't know, 150, 160 pounds. I'm on a 20-inch bike. I ain't going fast. Realistically, 10 miles an hour, 15 that's, miles that's an hour he tops. Because he wasn't going fast, so he felt the void. <laughs> It was yeah. like hit and then body like fully like became one with the stop sign. Yeah. I, my face was dead center of the stop sign, legs and arms wrapped around it. It was hilarious. I smacked that stop sign. I fell flat on my back on the ground. It hurt, but I was laughing my ass off. Justin's laughing his ass off. I thought we were both going to pee ourselves in this person's, the random person's front yard because this is in between Justin's house and... Eugene's house, so we haven't even made it there. We just, it was oh wacky. man, I don't even. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> talk. We, <laughs> <laughs> we tried to get up so fast and get out of there before anyone even seen. I don't know if anyone did see. I don't think but, so, oh, but man. it was for my eyes only because that was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. So one last story about me and Tyler, and it was one time Tyler had a party at his house. It was a backdoor pool, pool party. It was at night. And Tyler had this tractor with a bed in the back. Oh, I know where this is going. So Tyler's yard has such a steep hill. It's Let a me big tell you, hill. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense why it's such a built on such a steep hill. But I'm not even gonna go there. So I'm on the back of this tractor with a bed. I thought it'd be cool to write it down as you know, rather than walking down. I'm like, you know, I'll save the energy. I'm lazy. I'll get in the back of the back of the bed of the tractor. Didn't like the belt start slipping or something? I'm in the back of the tractor. And um, you know, I'm like, hey Tyler, like, you know, does this thing go faster? He was going so he's like, Yeah, it goes faster. I'll show you guys, you know, like watch and I'm back there, like, you know, holding on to the back of his seat and I'm standing up in the bed. Not sitting. I'm standing. So then <laughs> Tyler rips it into the faster mode. I totally missed the gear. I fall back <laughs> off the – my leg is caught now on the bed, and I fall back, and I'm being dragged across the grass, <laughs> screaming, Tyler, stop the tractor. And I'm walking – then I'm, as I'm getting dragged, I'm trying to keep my, my arms and walk with my arms like I'm a wheelbarrow. But I, and it, I couldn't help it. I had to let go because my I'm, I wasn't that strong. And I get dragged across the grass until the very bottom of the hill. And then Tyler's like, "What happened?" And I, I'm like laid out, and he's like, "Justin, like, we're, he's like looking around. And he's like, are you okay?'" And I'm like, "I asked you to stop. <laughs> Can you get my leg <laughs> off this bed?" <laughs> and finally, you know, he unhooked me, and I had the biggest grass stain of my life <laughs> on my clothing. It looked just like just a large streak. All I can remember is he asked me if I'd go faster, so I tried shifting to the next gear, and I don't know if the tractor started slipping or what, but it just took off down the hill way faster than it should have. And it took me with it. <laughs> Justin's right out of the trailer. <laughs> oh, it was It, it was took funny. me with it. It <laughs> took me with it. With that said, though, uh, we are coming to a close for this episode. Again, we will be having another episode this week coming out Friday, so... Be excited. Be ready. Um, we're going to give one last shout-out to our sponsors. Thank you so much, Oxford Gamers Den. Join the den. Join the den. Thank you, guys. Uh, you can follow them over on Instagram and Facebook at, at Oxford Gamers Den. That's gamers with a Z. As well as Lofty Cat. You can follow them over on Instagram at GC Boy or GC Boy Music both on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, 
on Instagram and Twitter. The Twitter handle and Instagram handle is the exact same. It's the amateur hour underscore. And please, please, guys, I ask you, follow us on SoundCloud. It's free. It all it takes is a Facebook login or your Google login. Give us a little hit the heart. Comment if you like the episode. Let us know what you like, didn't like, what you want to hear more of, maybe. And let us know how you feel about Junior, his first time coming on the show. Hopefully yeah, he's welcome. here to stay. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, sure Junior. So, unless you guys kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> and before well, we... he missed the first one, so we had to give him shit. Hey, man, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> and he be... has a real job. <laughs> <laughs> and before we come to a close, I also want to shout out a very special friend of mine, Gabby. Happy birthday. You guys can follow her over at at Flantian on Instagram. She actually is an artist. Go give her a follow. Flantian? How do you spell that? That is F-E-L-A-N-T-I-N over on Instagram. Go give her a follow. It was her birthday. And tell her we said happy birthday. Again, guys, thank you very much for listening. My name's Justin. My name's Tyler. And I'm the one called Junior. And thanks for tuning in to the Amateur Hour.